Hello, Clipper Nation. Brian Seaman here with yet another digital report. Great look at the Clippers practice facility. They have been busy there over the last couple of weeks. Obviously, this is a shortened uh, camp, unlike other days, other years where you have almost a full month to get ready. It's a very shortened uh, time frame for the Clippers to prepare for the 72-game road ahead. But the good news is something that we did not see last year, even though they had a full training camp, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George have been participating in all of the drills so far for Ty Lue and the Clippers. And before today's practice, Paul George sat down with the media and talked about the difference having Kawhi Leonard in camp this year. I mean, it's been good. I think we just take every day to get better. Um, we, you know, we enjoy it. We're enjoying this process. We're having fun playing together. First time that we've been healthy going into camp. This this year, last year, we weren't able to. So just a lot of stuff that we, we can work through and um, kind of you know speed the process up to get this team where we want to get to. We welcome in a one-man Yelp review for any Italian restaurant in the globe that we exist in. One of my favorites, Mr. Mike Fratello. You know, I remember I've talked with coaches, been lucky to be in this league for many years, uh, they always say, they, they emphasize the importance of the preseason. A lot of things have to happen beyond, but having your stars and having a full team, when you begin the message, when you begin to set the tone, helps so you don't have to play catch-up in January and February. From your eyes, how big of a deal is having Kawhi Leonard, Paul George in camp, even though it's an abbreviated one for the Clippers? Huge that both players are there. Remember, coaches in the offseason review what took place in the prior season. They make decisions based on what the staff, uh, what they see, what they know their weaknesses were and strengths are. And then when they put together their game plan for the following season, you obviously utilize your key guys. And in offensive plays, you prioritize they're going to get X number of shots a game. They're usually option A and then option B and then option C because they're your primary go-to guys. So when they're missing time, you're moving a guy up from the second unit, putting him in their place. And in your mind, you know, you didn't structure all this for the guy coming off the bench. You did it for the superstar guys. So they have to be there so you can execute, get the timing down. They understand rotations at the defensive end. Paul George and Kawhi Leonard understand that at the end of last season, a lot of heat fell on them. They also understand going into this season, they've got to produce. And they've got to carry this team, and they have to lead and hope the other guys follow because everyone wants the Clippers to win. One interesting tidbit that has come out of training camp, and Ty Lue talked about it today before practice, is that there is a routine with Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, not just on the floor, but after practice as well. Um, training camp, you know, he's been great. He's been phenomenal. Um, he's been through every practice, um, even the two a days. Um, he's doing a good job of setting the tone and and um, getting these guys to you know to follow his lead. And um, every day he's you know he's here an hour or so after practice working out. Um, him and PG, you know, they have a routine that they go through every single day. And um, you know, Kawhi playing all three preseason games this year. And uh, I know he doesn't love preseason, you know, as much, but just setting the, the tone and setting the example for the young guys. Um, you know, of what he's trying to do and, and how he's trying to lead this team. Um, you know, I think, you know, a lot of times, you know, with Kawhi, I just think more so is his pace, you know, every single night because with his frame and with his, his strength and his power of uh, playing with pace and getting downhill, getting into the paint, um, we're a whole different team. And um, so just staying on him about his pace, you know, in transition, um, when we're going through our sets on cuts and, you know, rip screens and things like that are just, you know, having the, you know, having that pace and that force, and um, that really drives our team. So Kawhi and PG doing extra practice after practice. I like it. You mentioned it earlier, setting an example for everybody. But these guys continue to polish their skills. And what happens is, as the media asks, well, what exactly do you mean? Like he says, an hour, hour and a half after practice, doing what? Just shooting the ball? No, there's a lot more to it than that. Remember, you can only go so long in practice where you're worrying about their bodies. You don't want those breaking down. You want their concentration. So there are certain things you can get done before practice or after practice. As we heard Ty Lu say, 
post up moves, pick and roll situations. Pick and rolls have angles changed all the time. That's a decision. Man with the ball coming off at a different angle. These are all things you can do in breakdown sessions after practice with the assistant coaches. So the guy may go through two hours, but then if you had another hour, hour and a half, he spent three, three and a half hours working on his craft. So in a lighthearted moment, Ty Lu was also asked today about Avita Zubats, who has a pretty refined offensive game. He hit the mid-range at a very high rate. But Ty Lu joked about uh, perhaps Serge Ibaka influencing Avita Zubats to maybe step outside and, and hit some threes. Here's what Ty Lu had to say. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's been on me about it. he wants to, uh, you know, even Lawrence to talk about it, you know, um, but he's been working on it and, um, you know, we'll see, maybe we'll, we'll give him a corner three every, every now and then, but um, I told him we got to make some, we can't just shoot him just to be shooting him. So um, he's pretty intrigued by it. You know, he has been working on it. So uh, we'll see, but I, I, I wouldn't expect a steady dose of it right now. <laughs> it doesn't appear that Avita Zubats will be, Steph Curry or Serge Ibaka anytime soon, although I do believe that is something in his toolbox that we will see maybe down the road. But it's interesting. Coaches always have plans and, and ideas. If the player wants to shoot threes, they've got to kind of prove it over time. Well, I'm sure this is something that Serge Ibaka passed along to Zeus saying, look, I wasn't a three-point shooter when I first came in the league, but I worked on it. I got better at it, and then the coach allowed me to do it. There's an interesting story I remember when Larry Bird was coaching in Indiana and similar player came to him and said, hey, coach, I think I can really shoot threes. Why don't you give me a chance? And Larry Bird didn't quite believe he could shoot threes. So Larry said, I'll tell you what, this week in practice, when it's over, I will assign assistant coaches to you and they will count. I want you to shoot 100 threes. And if you make 35 or 36 percent of the 100, I'll let you shoot threes in the game. At the end of the week, they brought the list in. Assistant coaches said, here's what he's shooting. Player shot 31%. Larry Bird said, no threes for you. Sorry. You, my friend, always have the green light with me. We always appreciate your time here. Clippers kick it off for real on the 22nd of December. But Fox Sports Prime Ticket, Fox Sports San Diego, will have you covered on Christmas night. Our show will begin at 7, pregame show at 7, 7.30 for the tip-off. We'll be here in this space all week, counting down the start of the season. But we will see you for real, for live on Christmas night with our game and our coverage beginning at 7.00.